Hello, and welcome to another IB Math Speedrun with me, Vince. So today we're going to be going through chapter 4.4 of the IB Math textbook, which is all about, well, graphically interpreting derivatives. So let's jump right in. So, well, what does a derivative mean? To remind ourselves, if we get the derivative of a curve, then we essentially get an equation that tells us what the gradient will be at any point on the curve. That's what a derivative is, or like, that's how we can imagine it on a graphical scale. So how can we apply this? One important application of derivatives is to find any maximum or minimum points on the curve. So a maximum point, a local maximum point, is the largest value that a curve obtains in a small section. Actually, it's just when um, the gradient changes from being positive to being negative, which indicates that we've reached a local maximum. And a local minimum point is when the gradient changes from negative to positive. Um, and as you can see, that means it, we've reached a local low. So it means like in between these boundaries, roughly, we've reached uh, the, the lowest point. So that's what a maximum minimum point is. The global maximum, if it exists, is the, lar the largest dot y value that's reached in the domain of the function. So in this case, it would be here. This would be the global one. And this would only be a local maximum. And the global minimum, if it existed, in this case, it doesn't really, is the same. It's the lowest value the function ever reaches. Um, if this function extends forever downwards, then the local minimum would be negative infinity. More, as I said, the global minimum will be negative infinity. Now, how can we use derivatives to find these turning points, as we call them, or stationary points? Well, we know that, first of all, the gradient of any turning point will be zero. So the derivative um, at this point, whatever x is at this value, should be equal to zero. Um, if And then to get whether it's a maximum or a minimum, we can check by getting the gradients on either two sides of it. So if it's a maximum, then the, the um, derivative uh, should be greater than zero for x is less than c, or, or yeah, and the derivative should be less than zero for when x is greater than c. So this means that when it's less than c, it's going upwards, and it's when it's greater than c, it's going downwards, um, creating a peak at this whatever constant this is. Actually, we should say this is f of c. And for minimums, it's the other way around. Um, the derivative should be less than zero as x is less than c, and the derivative should be greater than zero as x is greater than c. So that creates the opposite from cavity. Yeah, um, that's pretty much it. So now we can jump into some questions. And I guess I'll be doing the even ones. So we need to use the graphs to determine the intervals where f is increasing, the intervals where f is decreasing, and the x values of the turning points of f. OK, and so the first graph looks something like this. So it's purely graphical. Um, and this point is 1, this point is 5, this point is 3, and this point is negative 12. So in this case, uh, where is f increasing? Well, past x equals 1. So f is increasing as x is greater than 1. f is decreasing, well, in this case going down, as x is less than 1. And f is a turning point. Sorry, x is a turning point where x is equal to 1. Notice the curve turns from um, being downward sloping or decreasing to increasing at this point x equals 1 over here. Okay, so um, on to the next curve. We have the uh, curve that looks like this. Um, So this point is 0 0.5, this point is 1.5, this point is negative 0 0.5. So first of all, where is x increasing? Clearly, it's increasing here, but it's also increasing here. So we can say x, um, 
say negative 0 0.5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 0 0.5, or x is simply greater than 1.5. Where is it decreasing? Well, the opposite of these values. So x is less than negative 0 0.5, or x is between um, 0 0.5 and 1.5. And the turning points are simply negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1.5. So anywhere where the gradient is horizontal, it's turning point. Okay, on to the next question. We have we need to find the greatest and least values of the function 4x plus uh, 4, sorry, 4 plus 5x minus x squared minus x cubed in the interval negative 3 is less than or equal to x. It's less than or equal to 3. So, how do we find the greatest and least values? Well, first we want to get the derivative of this function. And this will be simply um, 5 minus x minus x squared. So in this interval, um, we will find the greatest and least values if we set f dash of x to simply 0. So if we say 0 is equal to well, we can say this is x squared plus x minus 5. Then we have two roots of this equation. So this is negative b plus or minus up. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we have negative 1 plus or minus square root of, one, uh, of 21 over 2. So this would be negative 1 plus the square root of 21 over 2 and negative 1 minus the square root of 21 over 2. Now, the thing is, one value of this is going to be out of bounds since negative 1 minus the square root of 21 over 2 will be less than 3. Um, let's just estimate this. 21 is roughly, square root of 21 is going to be greater than 4. So let's use 4. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5 over 2. Actually, it's in bounds. Never mind. So we have two points we need to check for. Negative 1 minus 21 square root of 21 over 2. And negative 1 plus the square root of 21 over 2. We need to find out which of these points is a local, well, is the local maximum or the local minimum. And we can test that by getting the gradients on either side of these points. So we know that this is roughly equal to negative 1 minus the square root of 21 over 2 is roughly equal to negative 2.79. And this is roughly equal to negative 1 plus the square root of 21 over 2, roughly equal to 1.79. So by testing the values, um, in this case, we have negative 3, and we also test negative 2, and then over here we can test 1 and 2. We can find out how these things slope up. So plugging it into the der to this derivative over here, negative 3 will be equal to um, 5 minus x minus x squared, 5 minus minus 3, so um, 5 minus minus 3 is 8 minus x squared, which is 9. So 8 minus 9 is negative 1. So we get that this has a negative gradient. And like for negative 2, 5 minus minus 2 is 7 minus 4 squared is equal to 3. So this has a positive gradient. So we know that since below this turning point, we have a negative gradient, and above this turning point, we have a positive gradient. This means that this is a minimum point. So this is a minimum point. Let's just check for the other one. Um, so we have 5 minus 1 minus 1 squared. So we have a positive gradient here, which is um, 3. And then 5 minus 2 minus 2 squared is equal to negative 1. So again, at this point, instead we have a positive gradient before the point and a negative gradient after the point, so this will be a maximum. Yeah, okay, so that's that function done. 
and then we'll move on to the final function. So the final function is we have a function that is f of x is or actually y is equal to x cubed plus ax squared plus b, and we know that it has a minimum point at 4, negative 11. Find the coordinates of the maximum and the value of b. Okay. So this is um, pretty simple. If it has a minimum, this is a min, at 4, negative 11, then we know that the derivative, or dy over dx, should be equal to 0 at 4, negative 11. So the derivative would be 3x squared plus 2ax. And so we know this equals 0 when x equals 4. So 3 times 4 squared plus 2a times 4. So we know that um, 16 times 3, 48, so negative 48 over 2 times 4, 8, is equal to a, so a must equal negative 6. So knowing this, we can find the maximum point. And we can find the maximum point by factorizing this equation knowing that a is negative 6, so oops, it's green. So we get dy over dx is equal to th um, x times 3x plus 2 minus 6, so minus 12. So actually, this will be equal to 3x times x minus 4. So we know that um, since we have a local minimum point at this factor, x equals 4, our local maximum point should be at 3x. So we have the maximum at x equals 6, uh, at x equals 0. Finally, we need to find the value of b. And that's okay. Since we know a and we have one of the coordinates on a curve, we know that negative 11, oh, negative 11 is equal to 4 cubed plus 6, um, 6, oh, minus 6, sorry, minus 6 times 4 squared plus b. So this is equal to 64 minus 4, uh, hold up, um, this is 48 times 2, which is 96 plus b. So b must be equal to negative 11 minus 64 plus 96. In other words, it should be equal to 21. Yeah, so that is the value that we should get. Um, let's just quickly check that that's correct. Uh, it should be, though. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that is correct. So yeah, that's all for this speedrun. I hope you enjoyed going through these questions, and I hope to see you in the next one.